A big part of physics is becoming a master problem solver. Being able to solve a problem using your knowledge and organization is an extremely valuable skill in any profession. Problem solving is about being smart and confident, but it also helps a lot to have some solid problem solving strategies. Let's solve a problem here and discuss these problem solving strategies. A car starts at rest and after 9.2 seconds is traveling at 25 meters per second. How far will it have traveled during this time? We often begin a problem by visualizing the situation. A little sketch in your page will often help with this visualization. A car starts at rest. After 9.2 seconds, it's traveling at 25 meters per second. So we have a starting point when the car is just sitting there and a finishing point when the car is traveling 25 meters per second. Over the 9.2 seconds in between, the driver must have put his foot heavy on the gas to cause this change. Okay, so now we have a clear picture of what's happening. The first question we should ask is whether this is a constant velocity problem or one where there's acceleration involved. Which is this? Well, acceleration is the rate of change of velocity. So if there's a change in velocity, there must be acceleration involved. Thus, it makes sense that the driver pushing the foot down hard on the gas is causing this car to accelerate. The next step in solving a kinematics problem is to list the information. A good strategy for any problem. What do you know and what do you not know? The car starts at rest, which means that the original velocity must be zero. So let's document that. Let's consider the car's final velocity. Looking at the original problem, can you see what the car's final velocity is? Well, we're told that the car is going 25 meters per second at the end of this trip. So, there's our final velocity, and now what about time? Can you see the time in the original question? Well, we're told that the trip takes 9.2 seconds. So, that's our time. Now, what are the missing variables that were not considered yet? How about acceleration? Now, we know that there is acceleration involved, as we discussed, but we're not given the acceleration. So let's just put a question mark here so we can remember that. Also, we'll list a D for displacement. Now the D is what we're looking for. So we don't know that, so we'll put a question mark beside that one as well. Our next step is to decide on a formula to work with. So let's go to the formula sheet and consider our options. Here's the section on kinematics from a typical physics formula sheet. Now we have a number of formulae to choose from, and all of which are perfectly correct and useful, but which one is our best tool for this problem? Now I'll take a second to point out that some students who try to go straight from the problem to the formula sheet without listing all the variables are usually struggling at this point. So having taken the few seconds to list our variables will easily make up for itself. Having listed our variables, it's easy to see that we would like a formula that includes D, the value we're looking for, and we'll probably avoid A since we don't know what A is at this point, but we'd like one that could include V0, VF, and or time, in that we know all of these. This one looks like a good choice. It has D, V0, VF, and time. The only unknown is the D, and we're looking for the D. Is this the only way to do this question? 
Well, not at all. Most problems can be solved many ways. Some people would choose to solve for A first, and then solve for the D. And that's perfectly fine. I'm just showing you the most easy and efficient way to solve a problem. Let's transfer our chosen equation into our solution here, exactly as it's shown on the formula sheet. This way, we're not only more organized, avoiding mistakes, but we clearly indicate to whoever is marking this question that we know which formula to choose. And this isn't always clear to a marker if we go directly to rearranging or plugging in numbers. At this point, we would use our algebra skills to rearrange the formula to solve for our unknown. Fortunately, this isn't necessary in this case, as the formula is already isolated for D. Thus, we can just plug in our numbers. So, we write the formula again, putting brackets where all the variables were, and plugging in our numbers in place of those variables. We now plug it all into our calculator and produce a solution which we write down with the appropriate units. We're done, but before we move on, there are two quick ways to check our answer. First, we can check our dimensions to see if they cancel out and leave the appropriate unit for our answer. Velocities added will be meters per second, and time is seconds, and we cancel these out, and we're left with meters. And we were looking for distance, and we have the appropriate unit of meters. Yep, that makes us feel more comfortable with our work. The other way to check our answer is to quickly stop and consider whether the answer we came up with is at all reasonable. So we can try to picture sitting in a car and flooring it and counting to 10. It's not easy to picture exactly what's going to happen, but if we came up with less than 100 meters, ooh, I'd probably check my answer again, as that seems pretty small. If we came up with more than a couple of kilometers, I'll be thinking that that seems awfully big for only 10 seconds. Either extreme might cause me to go back and check my numbers. So we'll move on. It's pretty frustrating to a teacher to have a student submit work on a question like this where they have 3.2 times 10 to the 6 meters or 0.23 meters, something that's totally unreasonable. In the end, they're just crunching numbers and not really stopping to think about the problem and what's a reasonable answer. Don't do this. Just take a few seconds at the end of each problem to avoid this. In this tutorial, we talked about how to become a master problem solver. Certainly, it takes confidence, it takes smarts, it takes lots of practice, and it really does help to have some strategies. We went over some key strategies in this sample problem. One, read the question carefully, visualizing what's going on. Quite often, sketching is helpful here. List all the information, both your known and your unknowns. This will help you move through the problem more easily. At this point, you'll often have to determine which formula to use. Listing your variables will help with this. Consider what you know and what you don't know and be strategic in picking a formula. Rearrange the formula if needed, and this will use your algebra skills. Substitute the numbers into your newly formed formula, and then calculate. And finally, definitely check your answer. Are the units correct? Did the number you come up with seem reasonable for the situation?